Hi Leo, thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Chandler. This is your 1111 portal energy update and astrology. So I'm going through the signs. Uh, Leo, this is your reading, but of course, make sure to check your sun, moon, rising, or Venus signs because those may hold more messages for you. Um, we're going to go through the astrology and then we're going to go into um, a little bit of tarot toward the end. So if you want to skip over the astrology, if this is one of um, the secondary reading that you're watching in, in, in my series here for the portal readings, um, feel free to skip over to the tarot. Uh, I basically go over the same astrology for each sign. Okay, so if you've already seen this, feel free to skip ahead. Um, and of course, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to like and subscribe. So you guys, here's the astrology. We are in 1111 energy. Now, 1111 is all about manifestation. Okay, it's a, it's a portal, it's a gateway, it's a vortex. And it represents a greater awakening on a collective level as well as on, on an individual level. We're in Scorpio season. We have like four planets in Scorpio. Uh, Mercury being one of them, Mercury is also retrograde. So you could be feeling the slowness of developments. But with Mercury retrograde, we also get this very introspective kind of reflective energy. Um, today, as we already have a numerologically special day, we also have Mercury retrograde conjunct the sun, which is called a Kazemi at 18 degrees. So as we reduce 18, it's a number nine. This is talking about endings transformation, conclusions, decisions being made from a point of authority and power. Things that Mercury retrograde has forced us to revisit are now being alchemized and transformed. In fact, this Kazemi actually represents alchemical transformation of emotional stagnation. Things in Scorpio where you may have been fixed or stuck for a long time, maybe these things have been hidden and uh, out of sight, are being illuminated now so that you can make progressive emotional developments. Though no action may take place today or even this week, your internal world may shift sub substantially. Mercury is transiting the sun as well today. And that's a pretty rare astrological occasion. If you have the right telescope, you might be able to see Mercury transiting the sun. But with our plain sight, <laughs> we probably won't be able to see it as the sun's rays are much brighter, right? But through this energy, and as they transit and conjunct, we're being given a broader vantage point, a bigger picture this will help us release ourselves from mindsets of victimization and stagnation, of course. We're no longer able to just point the finger at things, others or ourselves, claiming that these things are bad or good or black and white or even dark or light, but rather viewing the entirety of the situation and the fullness of the experience. And by doing that, we then are able to see how embracing these shadowy, spooky, hidden, creepy, crawly things that come out of Scorpio season and the darkness within the situation and hopefully be able to transform them. So li literally today and this week may bring realizations that help liberate oneself. But it's only through the process of going into the dark that we can emerge liberated, right? It's only by embracing our shadow that we begin to shed the light. So we have full moon in Taurus tomorrow, 11-12. And this moon is also training Saturn and Pluto sextiling Neptune. And so, as a whole, this is a period of settling and integrating what you've recently unearthed. Taurus has qualities associated with what we love, what we cherish, what we value, 
what we're devoted to, what gives us function and purpose in life. Where our value lies also may translate to your personal finances and assets. Right now, it's important for you to set standards for where your needs will be met. Taurus has a lot to do with quality over quantity. Aspecting Pluto and Saturn, this helps create lasting progress and appropriate building. And by looking at those very stubborn, very fixed or rigid ideas that we've had previously, kind of fueling these emotional stagnant propensities, we begin to focus more on what we deserve. And only by focusing on what we deserve, we, be, we begin to prioritize appropriately. And of course, by reprioritizing, we may even question our judgment as to what the heck we were doing before now, <laughs> you know? So Mercury retrograde is really assisting us by getting that pr perspective, by slowing down and maybe taking a look at ourselves or our situation and where our judgment lies. And if that's actually going to help us build or slow our progress. So Mercury retrograde and the 1111 portal issues are being further clarified as Mercury retrograde is forcing us to make low vibrational issues our priority right now. Essentially, how bad does a situation need to get before you gain this clarity? How low do you need to sink before you choose to swim? And like a snake shedding its skin, sometimes it is an uncomfortable process. But it's a process that needs to happen if you want to make these significant shifts. And I will say you have an optimal energy because if it has your awareness, you have the power to change it right now. Where you have felt victimized by things long in the past, you may now come out a victor from your circumstances or just a simple perspective shift. Now is the time to really take a look at those deeper truths that you may have been avoiding, either admitting to others and even to yourself. The situations that we may put ourselves in time and time again out of avoidance of maybe just addressing one of those areas of our lives. When we target the core of a wound, we can address every other situation that may stem from that core wound. Taurus really wants to get to the heart of the matter. Taurus is about beauty. It's about illuminating the power of Mercury and the Sun in Scorpio. It is being illuminated by the power of Mercury and the Sun in Scorpio. It may be bringing up some of those spooky, creepy things that we don't really want to look at and may not actually be so beautiful at the end of the day. But this discomfort is the process of becoming more high vibrational. And then the physical reality of what the Taurus energy embodies, the material possessions, beauty, earthly comforts, visceral sensations, and the body, the mind and, and, and body health, and also the Venusian luxury and aesthetics have the chance to shift as well. But it's when our internal world shifts that our external world shifts. This is the beauty of Scorpio season. And Taurus is helping foundationalize what it is you learn about yourself. Tough love is sometimes necessary too, and as you're a fixed sign, I know you know the power of discipline and organ organization, Leo. And maybe this week or at this time for the next two weeks, show yourself love by showing up to your responsibilities, by showing up to um, the priorities that will benefit you for a long time. And this doesn't mean to dismiss your emotions because I know, Leo, you're tempted to do that. But this is through honesty, integrity, and humility. 
Enlightenment can also be obtained through the comfort of what this full moon in Taurus wishes to bring you. The culmination of your efforts will be shown by the time this energy is done. But you may have a bit of a tug and pull or a struggle with the scorpionic, lustrous, visceral desires. Even the taboo of Scorpio season can have you enthralled for a moment. Thinking what you want is what you like when what you like can actually be wrong. What you really want could actually much be much more humble or simple than that. What is good for you could be much simpler than that. What actually brings comfort to the soul is typically the path of the, the least resistance, right? So with this fixed Taurus lunar energy, all you have to do is ask yourself, how can I get out of my own way? Venus squaring Neptune will draw focus upon what is possible and what may not even be real. There's an energy of wearing rose-colored glasses in relationships or having high expectations or an unrealistic desires. And the advice is to not let impossible dreams distract you from what is truly beautiful in your life. I think nearing the end of this energy, we're going to be fully integrated in such a way that really is liberating from previous disillusionments and hang-ups or attachments. And the freedom itself is going to be enlightening. Freedom itself may be what you want. So, Leo, for you, I am getting that you're done with being defensive. That was an energy that came through in the beginning of this message. I've been holding on to it. But you're done being defensive. And I think the task at hand for you may actually be to open up. To see what may come if you try a new approach, if you listen and observe and remain non-judgmental, if you stay in your integrity and power, you may be able to find the answer more simply. The Three of Pentacles and the Hanged Man. This is really interesting energy, actually, because I think whatever you've recently realized has been significant enough to actually, to actually bring you back to ground zero, in a sense. <laughs> now, this won't resonate with everyone, but for the people who I feel I'm connecting with today, you're looking at your finances. You're looking at your priorities. You've already been doing this, maybe on a subconscious level. I think, Leo, you're really done with the drama. You're really done with the BS. You're really done with the distractions. This is you refocusing. This is you getting the message, getting the memo. The Three of Pentacles is also about putting integrity into your craft. Maybe realizing some things has put other things into perspective. Maybe there's new help on its way. And what I say with this combination is... Success comes when opportunity meets preparation. And I think you kind of know that there's something in store for you with this 1111 portal. You're almost expecting it. And maybe that's your vantage point. Expecting success, knowing your capabilities, knowing your abilities, knowing what you're capable of achieving. There may be some significant insights coming to you now through dream time, through your own intuition. You could be receiving signs or synchronicities as to which direction to go in. And I think that you are inspired by it. I think that you are taking the reins. I think that you are finding new motivation to work out the details, to work in cooperation with others, 
um, you know, to put time and energy into something that you know will last, just like we were saying. If this is love, this is someone realizing that they would like to cooperate here with you because you are you are harnessing the qualities of integrity. You are harnessing the qualities of teamwork, amicability. This may be a new venture or idea in business, but I would say for now to keep your ideas sacred. Yeah, the three of wands. These are your ships coming in, but look at what we have on the bottom of the deck. Eight of wands in reverse. This is my designated Mercury retrograde energy. Okay, so Mercury is retrograde, and what does it affect most? Business and progress, right? Communication as well. So as you emerge with these ideas there still may not be a lot of action taking place in the physical world but i'd like to reiterate what i said in the astrology your inner world shifts before your physical world does and as you can tell with my communication leo my my voice my tongue my words they just haven't been working this week i f i sound like i have a speech impediment my grammar and my whatever is all over the place this may cause some delays but needless to say, I think that whatever that whatever you are venturing out, whatever you are currently embarking upon, this is a golden opportunity. I can't, I can't, I'm being drawn to all this gold around him. Kind of like he has three options. You may have multiple options. We have two threes here. I mean, it's quite interesting how this solid foundation is coming literally out of nowhere. This is like a little bit of divine orchestration, I think. Um, because what is being worked out, you know is going to turn into prosperity in the physical. But you're using your abilities of manifestation to almost draw it in. I'm getting this magnetic energy. Magnet, magnetism magnanimous magnus there's this golden energy that it just feels so it feels so royal and you know like leo you guys represent a lot of royal energy you know very regal prideful energy but this isn't so much um this isn't so much pride or boasting but um just being aware being aware of yourself, fully aware of yourself or fully aware of your capabilities. I really like this. It seems like it seems like through through the messages that I've received intuitively for you so far. I feel like a lot of you are coming through a phase of oppression. It feels very oppressive what what you have recently come out of. This is a time of waiting of stagnancy of you know, where do I go? Please tell me God send me a sign kind of energy. I think instead, something has happened. Something has shifted. You feel much more open. You feel much more capable now. And I don't know, it could depend on everyone's different circumstance, of course. But there's a realization of your strengths. There's a realization of your capabilities. And it's actually, it's actually foundationalizing through this Taurus moon. I don't feel like you'll ever be able to go back to how you once felt suppressed or defensive. I feel that if there is a suppressive or oppressive energy, that it is literally being put in your past. This is something that you're not avoiding or ignoring, but addressing and liberating yourself from. Okay, Leo. We have the Four of Cups. An interesting energy here, talking about ignorance or avoidance. The Four of Cups is talking about having one opportunity here. Having an, an opportunity. Maybe you have four options, but there's one that sticks out. But you're contemplating this, you're not 
moving on it, and you may even be afraid to look at it. Let's just face it, Leo. You are very much in your own energy, and with that energy, it may even be more comfortable for you to move forward solo. If you're in a relationship, or if this is involving a relationship, you could be really hesitant to take an offer coming your way. You could be really hesitant to even look at this offer because it may be one coming from the past. <laughs> we have Mercury retrograde again. It may be one coming from the past that you have to revisit, redefine. You're hesitant to take it. The other energies are very auspicious, foundational, starting from scratch, um, using what you know, lear having learned from your lessons or have taken appropriate actions or steps. Oh my God. We have another three. Three of cups. What the fuck? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like three, three, three. You guys are going to freak me out. The hanged man. Yeah. It's a 12. What does 12 break down to, Leo? Three, 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 three. What is going on? Leo, you have, you have probably the most fundamentally auspicious energies. I say that because, you know, Aquarius got an amazing reading. Uh, Gemini got a pretty good reading. Aries got a very in-depth reading. You have an energy that I think you realize is not paying off or panning out at this moment. There is something of a long-standing offer here. Okay, or something that is developing. We go from the Three of Cups to the Four of Cups. This is progressive, but in essence, it has its own process as well. So I don't think that you're wanting to rush anything. It's not that you are ignoring or even thinking of rejecting any offer. It's just simply a matter of time and this process because you know you're going to be victorious. You know you're going to be successful. You know you have lots of good karma and wealth and success coming your way. But why rush? But why rush? This three of cups is harvest. It's working in community. It's working with people. It's... Um, cooperative ventures it's also celebration it's like it's a celebration you know i'm getting too that with this energy you could actually be having it's it's an it's an interesting energy because i feel you're so solo <laughs> i feel you are so solo and you're really carrying your own weight. You're not really depending on anyone. You're definitely doing what it is you need to do. You're being very self-sufficient at this time because of whatever you've learned, because whatever whatever has been shown to you, it's very, very clear to you, and you don't second-guess yourself at all. But when it comes to relationships and these emotions, it feels like you're holding off for some reason. It looks like... Um, it almost looks like you kind of already know how this is going to go or how things are going to pan out. And it's almost like, um, it's almost like you're taking your time. It's almost like you're just sort of enjoying the process. Um, and in turn, you're remaining open to what may come your way. So it's this, this slowness that's actually it's happening so naturally for you. It's a very interesting energy. I, I, I know I kind of went off for that tangent, but 
there is an interesting energy of you being very solo, but in turn, because you are so solo, self-sufficient, and open, you're bringing a lot of people to you. I mean, this Three of Wands is so magnetic. It's almost like effortless for you, Leo, right now. It's almost effortless for you. And on, I mean, I can't even make this up. This comes out on the bottom, uh, on the last draw, and on the bottom of the deck we have the Hermit. There is a serious feeling of uh, enlightenment coming out of a dark phase and into the light, coming out of the struggle and being rebirthed into the abundance. But it's a phase. It's a, it's a process. Just as the Empress is depicted as pregnant, you know, as, as you have a baby in the womb or in the belly, this woman can't rush that process as much as she may want to just get it on and over with, whatever the case may be. No, it's going to be nine months before she gives birth. Like, how do you negotiate nature? How do you negotiate with this natural process? You're not trying to negotiate this process. You don't have to do much of anything other than remain proactive and magnetic in your energy field. You are drawing toward you very many auspicious opportunities. And maybe it's because this dark night of the soul taught you quite a bit. I almost feel like this is the ending note because of what you've had to go through. Where we began was this hanged man. The hermit and the hanged man oftentimes like coming out together, okay? They're, they're a bit of a similar energy. Um, one feeds off the other. You know, when we come out of hermit mode, then we go into uh, the hanged man, where the hanged man is concerned. It's kind of like, okay, now I'm ready to, now I see, now I, now I have integrated enough to know that I'm being divinely guided. Um, maybe I should listen to my divine guidance more because I know now what got me in this hermit mode in the first place was not listening, not, not, not being able to go with the flow, not trusting my intuition or the, the divine orchestration of things, right? So as you emerge from hermit mode, it's not like you go into full-blown action. Instead, it's, it's actually quite the opposite. You've learned too much to hastily embark upon anything that doesn't serve a purpose. You're much more concerned about your purpose. And so the hermit mode may have been this dark night of the soul. It could have been a very dark time in your life. And with this 1111 in the year 2020 coming up being a new decade, you're just simply not willing to repeat those things. As much resistance as you may have had in the past over integrating uh, new ideas or working with certain people or taking offers such as this, I think instead of um, resisting the offer or the growth, um, you're, you're resisting your urges or, or self impulses to do things simply your way. You're really thinking more spiritually. You're really thinking more emotionally. You're really thinking much more energetically. This three of wands screams energy. I mean, you have figured something out about yourself that may have been groundbreaking. I really like this energy, Leo. I think that this is really auspicious energy. This hermit and the empress is you taking time in the next two weeks to integrate what it is you know, what it is you've learned, maybe about yourself, what kind of areas in life are going to help you prosper, what kind of um, energies or people will diminish your growth. You're going to be th thinking very seriously about this. But I think what is so empowering is that you actually have a choice. You don't feel victimized by any of this. You don't feel um, stuck or stagnant. You don't feel like um, there's only one way. I think that there's multiple ways for you. And, and each of these ways provides um, 
something different to nourish your soul, something different to nourish your creative capacities, your relationships, your personal endeavors, or your, your career pursuits. There's a lot going on for you from this manifestation. And I just want to say that if this hangman is in reverse and the hermit comes out as a number nine, as a completion, we're looking at you needing to shed some layers still through this process. You know, this is not all just get up and go for Leo. This is a process. And I think that you realize you want to take this slow because you want to do it right. You want to do it right. And where there has been suppression, oppression, defensiveness, sabotage, um, you know, lack of consideration or foresight on your behalf, those, those are literally the tendencies that you had to deal with during this dark night, during this darker phase. And as you emerge, you're just going to be doing things differently. That's all. It's not like a cycle has completely come to an end for good. No, those energies are carried with you in different form because you have taken your power back from them. Does that make sense? This situation is only going to become more clarifying the more you work with your own shadow, the more you own it and embrace what you've learned. That is where true power comes from, and I think that you're really honing in on that. Really auspicious energy, Leo. What else is there? It's very simple. If there is an offer coming your way, I think that it could be very um, auspicious. You could feel very rewarded from it. You could feel um, very supported by the universe. In fact, with this water energy coming through, I think the universe is in favor of it. They could already be celebrating from, from the efforts, from your accomplishments. You know, you could have applause on the other side, as far as I'm concerned, for the kind of groundbreaking ideas, the groundbreaking moves you're making in your life. The, the way you're manifesting is very different from when you were previously. Um, the energy that you were previously in, it's very, very different. And it makes the difference. I like it. Thank you so much, Leo, for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.